Hi guys, so is diplomatic pressure working? Senior people from Joe Biden's administration have been flying not just to Israel to meet with the Prime Minister and President there, but also to Egypt and Qatar. The Arab neighbour to the south of the Gaza Strip provides both a way out for some people and a way in for much needed supplies, if very little. The opening of the border in a limited way is one bit of good news, another was the switching on of water once again by Israel to the south of Gaza. Now this is all very little, but perhaps it's a positive sign. Have a listen. Well, we have some breaking news now concerning those dual nationals, the foreign nationals who have been inside Gaza. Certainly yesterday, uh, the US uh, representatives were saying that foreign nationals should head to the Rafah border crossing, that crossing between Gaza and Egypt, because it might open. In the end, it did not open. And we're hearing now from the Embassy of Palestine representative for the Rafah border via our colleagues at NBC. This is Kamal Khatib, suggesting that Palestinians can cross... This is dual national, uh, foreign national Palestinians. Palestinians can cross the border into Egypt starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow and the humanitarian aid which has been massing on the south side of that border will also start crossing into Gaza at the same time. He said that the foreign national Palestinians are then expected to fly to Cairo from Al Arish airport which is some 30 miles from Rafa and um, fly then to Cairo airport and then on to their final destinations. Uh, as you can see there pictures uh, from yesterday, uh, those uh, foreign nationals had been gathering at the Rafa border, having been told by their embassy representatives to head down there. The US State Department estimating that some 500 dual national Americans are involved and they'd certainly been told to go and the border might open at any time. It seemed the Egyptian authorities had been holding out for a deal whereby aid was allowed to cross into Gaza. We know they're short of food, they're short of water supply, Supplies, and we know they're critically short of some medical supplies as well. So it looks like a deal has been done. We'll wait to see if it actually happens. But certainly there was a suggestion that it could happen yesterday. And now looking like 9 a.m. Monday morning. So once again, this is very positive. Um, it is, of course, limited to a very small number of people, foreign nationals who are Palestinians and are, are not going to stay in Egypt. They're likely to move on to their final destination. So, yes, it is positive. It's, it's creating a corridor. Probably it's the result of pressure being applied to Israel to protect this, this border crossing, not to shell this border crossing, and also pressure applied to Egypt to allow these people to pass through. Now, it's not going to help the the mass numbers in in Gaza who want to leave Gaza and go to Egypt to flee Gaza. Um, that that door is closed to, to most of those people at this moment, um, and it's unlikely to be opened at any time any time soon. There is a, also the other positive story that water has been switched on to southern Gaza. Now this is all very little. The siege is still going ahead. It seems. Um, there have been some conflicting statements within the IDF itself. At the beginning of this, they had said that they, were, they had ordered people to leave uh, northern Gaza, the Gaza city, um, within 24 hours. It seems that that 24-hour limit has been extended. Now, we don't know by how long, but it seems that they are willing to be a bit flexible on that. Whether we can call this positive or not, we're grasping at straws here. But it is perhaps a sign of diplomatic pressure being applied probably by the United States to, uh, to ease off the pressure on Gaza somewhat. Of course, as I don't know if you could see on the, on the, twi on the ticker at the bottom of the screen, it talked about a thousand people are lying under the rubble. Um, hospitals have run out of medicine. The water, water supply in, in northern Gaza, in the Gaza Strip, is, is, has been switched off. Um, it's been, it's, it has already run out in some cases. So we're seeing hospitals and uh, centers where people are hunkering down, uh, running out of water, electricity and fuel. A desperate situation. So any positive signs have to be grasped at, but it means that unless there is more pressure being applied to the Israeli government, it seems things are just going to get worse. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.